For the past few weeks, hundreds of container ships have been clogging the Panama Canal, and it's currently affecting your life without you even knowing it. Located at the heart of Central America, the Panama Canal is one of the most impressive engineering marvels of the modern era. Being a massive waterway that connects the Atlantic and Pacific Oceans, the Panama Canal is an absolutely crucial shortcut. Every year more than 14,000 ships pass through the canal, making it a key part of our world's maritime trade. However, lying beneath the waves, there is one looming threat that poses a significant challenge to the canal's future, and that is climate change. But hold on, we all learned from schools that due to an unnatural rise of temperature, icebergs in the Arctic would melt, adding lots of water to the ocean. Sea levels would rise and that would actually benefit the Panama Canal, right? Well, it's actually the complete opposite. The Panama Canal is now being affected by a major drought. You may be unaware that the impacts of climate change are far and wide, not just limited to plain old icebergs melting. In decades following the Industrial Revolution, climate change has greatly disrupted the natural precipitation patterns, leading to more extreme weather events. There were tons of unusual weather events just this year, with massive storms in Libya, Greece and major cities like New York and Hong Kong. On the other hand, there were also droughts in other regions of the earth, such as the Mississippi River and Bolivia. However, the Panama Canal usually gets consistent rainfall for a hefty 8 months of the year, specifically from May to December. But this year, rainfall has drastically decreased due to climate change, heavily affecting the bodies of water that feed the canal. Because of this, the Panama Canal authorities have restricted the number of ships that can pass through the canal from 37 to 32 per day. It's even reported that ships had to auction for their precious spots on the canal, causing some shipping companies to pay $900,000 on top of the original $400,000 regular fee, and that's per ship. But this raises yet another question. The Panama Canal is right between two of the largest oceans on Earth, so how does a drought even impact the canal? Surely the oceans don't just dry up. Firstly, we need to take a look at how the Panama Canal operates. The canal is not exactly a straight smooth sailing waterway like the River Thames. There's actually a 26 meter height difference between Panama Canal's Atlantic Ocean entrance compared to the opposite Pacific side. How does one lift a container ship that can weigh up to 200,000 tons? The answer is a bit of engineering ingenuity. To lift or lower the massive container ships over these huge heights, the canal uses three major ship elevators, formerly known as locks. When a ship enters a lock chamber, the gates close behind it creating a watertight seal. The lock chamber is then filled with water, raising the water level and allowing the ship to float higher like an elevator. Remember, this system was built more than 100 years ago, without the aid of advanced computers or any high-tech construction machinery which I can't lie is extremely impressive. However, there's one downside to the system. It's very slow, allowing less than 40 ships to pass through per day, and most importantly, requiring a huge amount of water to operate. 200 million liters for each vessel to be precise. For comparison, adult males are recommended to drink 3.7 liters of water per day, meaning the canal uses enough water for 54 million people to drink for a day, which to put into perspective is the entire population of South Korea. And 40 ships each day means enough water for the entire population of Earth. The water-driven canal locks draw water from the Gatun Alajuela and Miraflores lakes, which are fed by the Chagres River. With a severe drop of rainwater in recent months, the Port Authority is forced to come up with restrictions, and 32 boats being permitted to pass through per day is simply just to ensure a controlled flow of vessels. This restriction helps manage the extremely limited water resources and prevents excessive strain on the canal's infrastructure. The maximum vessel draft, which refers to the depth of a ship's hull below the waterline, has also been reduced from 50 feet to 44 feet, or 13.4 meters, which means the ship cannot hold too much weight, which would drag down the ship's hull. As such, some merchant ships are forced to unload their containers and send the lighter vessels through the canal, while the goods traverse Panama by rail before being reloaded for shipping. Moving the goods in this fashion adds a lot more time to the already delayed schedule of goods passing through the canal. The drought is also amplified by another climate phenomenon called the El Nino effect, which is a climate pattern characterized by warmer than average sea surface temperatures in the central and eastern tropical Pacific Ocean. It can have significant global implications, including altering rainfall pattern. Due to the El Nino effect, the Panama Canal region experiences drier conditions and reduced rainfall. This amplifies the challenges that are already posed by climate change. In fact, while we were still editing this video, there are new reports that the ship slots will be even further reduced from the aforementioned figure of 32 to 25 ships per day due to the intensified El Nino effect, and that number will be even further reduced over the next three months to 
18 slots per day from the start of February 2024. That's just an insane amount. But this raises yet another question. As the canal is not perfectly flat, why not just make it even? Open up the gates, let water rush through from both of the oceans, and just level out the whole thing? Well, we need to take a look at how the canal is constructed in the first place. The primary digging site for the Panama Canal was the Gale Yard slash Culebra Cut, an artificial valley that slices through the continental divide in Panama, linking to the Atlantic Ocean and Pacific Ocean. It's about 30 meters deep, 12 kilometers long, and 500 meters wide, and removed about 100 million cubic meters of material. It is not your average excavation and was considered to be one of the most ambitious projects at the time it was built. Back in the 1900s, all they had was good old-fashioned dynamite and human labor. Lots of human labor. 6,000 people to be precise. As it took so many resources just to cut the opening for the canal, imagine the cost of leveling the entire canal. The cut would have to be about twice as deep and twice as wide, and seven times the length, which combined together just makes it outright impossible for its time. But how can this be fixed? Climate change is not going anywhere, and the massive bottleneck in the Panama Canal is here to stay. I don't even know where to begin with this one. Sure enough, ships can always go the long route and go around South America on a path called the Magellan Route. It imposes a substantial detour, but it does offer the opportunity to pick up or drop off additional cargo along the way in countries like Brazil, Argentina, and Chile. Ships can also choose the Northwest Passage across the Arctic, but this route remains hazardous to navigation and does not offer any significant opportunity to pick up or drop off cargo along the way. There have been quite a lot of proposals of constructing a brand new canal in the vicinity, but nothing really comes to light. The closest thing we have is the Nicaragua Canal, which was a proposed shipping route through Nicaragua to connect the Caribbean Sea to the Pacific Ocean back in 2014. In fact, the potential of building a canal through the region goes way back to 1825, when the Federal Republic of Central America hired surveyors to study a route via Lake Nicaragua. Funded by a Chinese company, the project started in 2014 and was projected to be completed in 2020. However, due to financial and political reasons, the project was completely abandoned. So, is there a more realistic alternative to the Panama Canal? Trains. Mexico's government is reviving a railway between the Gulf of Mexico and Pacific Ocean that had been in decline for more than a century. The $2.8 billion project would feature a 308 kilometer railway link between renovated ports at the Salina Cruz and Coatzacoalcos, connecting industrial parts and airports along the route. The route offers great proximity to the US with a transit time of just six and a half hours, which cuts down a heck of a lot of waiting time for container ships. Currently in the canal, ships would need to go on a waitlist of 20 days just to access the entrance of the canal. After those 20 days, the whitelisted ships would get access, but it would still take them 10 hours to pass through the canal. Imagine being a crew member on these ships. Staying on a packed container ship for 20 days would be so boring. But luckily, one sailor had a brilliant solution. He was subscribed to Geospace to keep himself occupied during the hefty waiting time. Alright, but realistically, these alternative solutions will take a lot of years to materialize, and on top of that, a lot of money, which means the Panama Canal is here to stay for a long time. As we navigate an era of accelerating climate change, it's absolutely crucial that we understand how this is going to affect the Panama Canal, as keeping tabs on things will help us all out in the long run.